I'm gonna show you how to get started with your PicoDev capacitive touch sensor and a Raspberry Pi Pico. We'll connect these two together and get some example code running so you can detect touch events on each pad. And then we'll remix that code to create a lighting controller. Let's do it. To follow along, you'll need a PicoDev capacitive touch sensor, a Raspberry Pi Pico with the pin soldered facing down, a PicoDev expansion board for Raspberry Pi Pico, and a PicoDev cable. Plug your Pico into the expansion board, making sure that the USB connection is on the same side as the two pin battery connector. Connect the cable to the PicoDev socket at the bottom and connect the other end to your capacitive touch sensor. And I've just mounted everything to this PicoDev platform to keep it in place for the rest of the tutorial. Finally, connect your Pico to your computer with a USB lead. In the download section for this tutorial, find the three files that we need to download, right click each link and select save link as. I'm gonna save these somewhere that makes sense, like a PicoDev directory in my documents. Next, open up Thony, navigate to that same directory you saved those files. Here they are in my documents PicoDev. And you may have to click the start stop button just to connect to your Raspberry Pi Pico. Here it is down the bottom left. Select the three files that you downloaded with a left click on the top one, hold down shift and click on the bottom one, then right click and upload to. We can see those three files have uploaded to the Pico. Double click main.py on the Raspberry Pi Pico to open up that example script. And this is what we're working with. We can press control D to run the script. And we have coming out in the shell, we have three digits on the right hand side, all reading zeros and they correspond to touchpads one, two, and three. So if I touch touchpad one, we can turn the first digit to a one. If I touch touchpad two, the second digit becomes a one, and the same for touchpad three. And you can see that reflected in the plot on the right. So if I touch one, the blue line goes up, two is the orange line, and three is the red line. And if I slide my finger along the touch sensor, I can actually trigger two adjacent pads so here we have touchpad one and two registering a touch event simultaneously and one and three. You can see that in the graph as well. We've got a few options when we set up the touch sensor. We can pass in the argument touch mode equals single as a string. And I've just pressed control R to run that. And now if I touch a pad and then another pad, it rejects that second touch event. So that can be useful if you want to say, slide your finger from one pad to another and not allow multiple touch events at the same time. Sliding along the sensor, I can only cause one of those indicators to be a one at any time. The touch sensor also has a programmable sensitivity from zero to seven with zero being the most sensitive and seven being the least sensitive. And you can change that sensitivity with the sensitivity argument. I can set that to say, if I set it to be very sensitive at zero and run the script again with control R, then I may not even have to touch the sensor to get a touch event. My finger is hovering just above the pad, but it's still registering an event. You might want to tune the sensitivity if you want to put a label over your touch sensor. This way you can put your own text or pictures on the touch sensor and give each button a new meaning. You might also want to tune the sensitivity if you intend to clip onto these ring terminals with some alligator clips so that you can clip them onto other objects and use those objects as touch sensors. Now for a fun little project, I'm going to connect this Globit Rainbow to the Pico and use the numbers one, two, and three to control the colors that are shown on these LEDs. We've covered connecting a rainbow to a Raspberry Pi Pico before. Check out our tutorial for that. Copy the remix code out of the article and paste it into your main.py. In the loop at the bottom of the main script, we have as usual status equals touch sensor dot read to read the status of the pads. And then we use that status to load either a zero or a 255 into three variables, R, G, and B. This is the amount of red, green, and blue to mix in on the LEDs. Then we just call pixels.fill RGB to show in the solid color on the whole strip that we have determined using the touchpads. The following code basically just prints out whichever color is appearing in the LEDs. So if we run the script, there's red, there's green and there's blue. So one is red, two is green and three is blue. 
And if I touch one and two at the same time, we can mix red and green to make yellow. And one and three at the same time, red and blue make magenta. And just for completeness, two and three at the same time, green plus blue is a nice like aquamarine. And so there you have it. We can register touch events using the PicoDev capacitive touch sensor. We can even branch our program to do different things depending on which sensor is being pressed. In this case, we're printing a different message into the shell, but we're also changing our program's behavior just by using that status indicator in the way that we determine the values of some variables. So there you have it. I hope this little starter project inspires you for your own projects using the PicoDev capacitive touch sensor. In this little starter project, we were able to change the print message based on what pad is being pressed. So we can branch our program to do different actions depending on which button or pad is being pressed. And we also use that status to change what values are loaded into certain variables so that we can make a nice lighting display. If you make something cool from this starter project, or if you just need some help, head over to the Core Electronics forums. We'd love to see you there. And until next time, thanks for watching.